Hey everyone, welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're doing another one of the Oakley Roots Sally Tomato Mystery Box collaborations. Today, we're doing the Scarlet, and this pattern comes to us from Sally Tomato. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. At first, I was like, I wasn't so sure about this pattern, but that's actually why I picked it, because I wanted to try it out and you guys, this bag is so good. It is so, so good for beginners, and it is so good as a gift to anybody in your life because this is the most flattering shape. So let's just go through the bag real quick, and then I'll tell you more, and I'll show you how it looks on. So this bag is very simple. You can see we have an opening on the top. There are no zippers. You can definitely add zippers if you'd like, but the pattern has none. We have this beautiful little flap here that I think they call a tab with this cute tassel, and you can have a lot of fun with this tassel. We have a magnetic snap to keep it closed. So we open that up. There's our little magnetic snap. And then on the inside, you can see we have one really cute little slip pocket. Again, a really fun place to add some color, add a little bit of you know contrast, a little bit of interest, and then we just have a nice wide open space. For the strap, we have two O-ring connectors, and then we just have a regular one size strap. On the back is where I decided to put my bag tag. You could definitely add a recessed zipper. I know a lot of folks like to have a zipper on the side of the bag that goes against your body because that's where you can put like your ID or some cash or your phone. Uh, very easy to add a recessed zipper right here if you'd like. We're not gonna go over that in the pattern today because this does go along with the mystery box and so I wanna make sure I show you everything that you can use with the material that's in the box. So nothing extra. Uh, there's no rivets here. You are more than welcome to add rivets if you'd like though. You know how much I do love my rivets. But we're not gonna be using any rivets. It's very easy to have a nice professional finish on these straps right here. This bag, guys, is so pretty. Now, the colors that we picked for this month this is, this is my vibe because I know we're going into the holidays and so a lot of folks are probably expecting green, silver, gold, red, things like that. But this, this is a more subtle holiday. This is what I'm considering like a sugar plum. You know, like sugar plum fairy, nutcracker, things like that. This is like a sugar plum. It's a very neutral, very calm, very holiday, but not like in your face holiday. Works well into the new year, into spring, summer, any season. So. I thought that this just turned out so beautiful. And this is kind of like a blank canvas bag. You could definitely add some quilting to these panels to give it a really cool pop. You could add some embroidery. You could add some heat transfer vinyl. You could put on like a pin, like if you have, hold on a second. Okay, so you can do this with any pin. This is just what I have. But let's say, let's say you're a member of the Oakley Roots Patreon speakeasy tier and you have this beautiful little magnetic pin. You can add that here. You could have a lot of fun with this. So I love that for the kit, we're keeping it neutral, we're keeping it very blank canvas, but also it looks great just as is, right? Okay, so many of you know my mom, we call her Bobby. Uh, she's part of the business, she helps out with all of this. Well, she came over to look at the bag and she looked at it, she kind of held it up and she's like, oh yeah, that's a really cute bag. And then she took it and she put it on and she looked in the mirror and she goes, oh my goodness, this bag is so cute. This is a bag. Look at, look at how it hangs. It is like the perfect length. My mom and I have different body types, different sizes. It looks great on my size. It looks great on her size. This is just, this is a bag where the design of it looks good on everybody. I mean, look at this. Look how cute that is. Isn't that little tassel? Isn't that adorable? So personally, when it comes to like gift giving, this would be a bag I would make for anyone in my life where I wasn't quite sure what style they liked because you could, again, think of like a, like a caramel colored faux leather, right? Like a caramel colored faux leather, maybe just a little pop of color right here, or you could just keep it all very, very neutral. It's a shape that is flattering on every body type. It is a bag that is great for beginners. It comes together so easy, so quickly, doesn't use a whole lot of stuff, not a lot of bells and whistles. You can add the bells and whistles if you'd like. Like I said, modifications I would make would be definitely put a recessed zip pocket on the back, probably a recessed zip pocket in the lining as well. We love pockets. I would keep the slip pocket in the lining. Uh, I would not do a zipper on the top because of the shape of it. I think that it looks best like this. This closure is enough. I have put stuff in this bag and kind of put it on the counter, put it on the floor, and it's been fine. So I think that the closure is good enough. Uh, but then yeah, if you wanted to and then quilting that's what that's I want to try I want to try quilting with this bag Okay, so I've actually been having a lot of fun making these you guys 
Look at this. So this is like that mustard faux leather vinyl. And then I just used a really fun printed vinyl for the flap, a pop of color for the lining. I used the same printed vinyl for the strap over here. I mean, I just, I just love this pattern. We wanna look, let's look at this one on too. Let's just look at them all on. Cause again, you gotta put it on. Promise me that if you make the bag, you're gonna put it on, okay? Look at how cute that is. That's such, I just, I love this look right here too. It's just, it hangs perfectly. It's comfortable. It's not falling off my shoulder. And then I wanted to show you that you don't have to do a whole lot of extra to add some bling to this. So you can see just using this printed vinyl that adds a lot, right? But also for the tassel, do you see on the tassel on the back side? I added sparkly heat transfer vinyl and look at how much fun that is. So another easy, fast, quick option. I just, I love this. I hope you guys do too. If you've tried the Scarlet, let me know. I wanna know how you guys like it. If you're part of the subscription box, make sure you let me know how you like the pattern. Let me know how it comes together. Send me photos. If you're on social media, on Facebook or Instagram or even TikTok, uh, just tag me. I'd love to see your version. Also make sure you tag Sally Tomato. They're equally as excited about this. This is, this is a really fun month, especially as we're going into the holidays, guys. We have got you covered when it comes to gifts, okay? Just wait. Just wait. If you're interested in signing up with the Ugly Roots Sally Tomato Mystery Box collaboration, uh, this month is currently over. So if you wanted to get the kit for this, unfortunately we have passed the deadline. The deadline for every month is the 10th of the month for that month. So if you sign up now, you will be in the November box. Uh, this box unfortunately is completely sold out, but you're gonna love November. You're gonna love November. And every month it is a mystery. So I know I've had a lot of questions about that. Like, is there any way I could possibly know what's in it before I sign up? Unfortunately, no, the mystery part is kind of like the big deal of the box. So if you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. All right, guys, let's get started. So the pattern calls for half a yard of main fabric, which is going to be the body of the bag and part of the flap if you want it to be part of the flap. Also half a yard of lining and then a six inch cut that's 25 inches wide for your contrast. Now, if you got the kit, you're gonna have these strips already out ready for you. You wanna be careful with cutting. So we're gonna go through that in just a moment. Since we're using cork and waterproof canvas, we will not be using any stabilizer today. However, if you're using a quilt cotton or anything like that, you should definitely include some at least woven interfacing. Foam might also be really nice on this bag to give it a really firm structure. Decoville light is also an option if you wanna add that to your exterior. Again, if I'm using vinyl or cork, I don't really need to add those. The only hardware we'll be using today are these three O-rings, two for the handle and then one for that cool tassel on the front and then a small magnetic snap. That's it, no zippers today. So let's work our way through the panel pieces. So for the main panel, you're gonna have two cuts of your exterior. If you have the kit, this is gonna be that pink cork. Now, listen. Before you cut this out, you need to draw it out on your cork. It is a tight fit. You have enough cork in the kit to get your two cuts, but you need to make sure you draw it out before you cut it. Because sometimes because of the shape of this, you think you're lining it up kind of straight, but you're lining it up as an angle, and then you end up like cutting off a corner. So just trust me, <laughs> learn from my mistakes, use, an air erasing marker or a chalk pencil or something like that on the wrong side of your material and trace out these two cuts before you cut them. So we have two cuts of the exterior material and then we have two cuts of the lining material. In your kit, you might have a cool winter white or a warm winter white. So either way, it's a very light kind of white color for the lining today. And none of this is interfaced with anything because it is material that doesn't need it. And then we have the flap. And for the flap, if you're doing the kit, what we're gonna be doing is using the contrast material and the lining material. You have enough material to use the pink as well if you'd like. So you do have a lot of options here to kind of mix up the little features. For me though, I will be using the waterproof canvas and the contrast cork for the flap. Next up, we have our little pocket. This goes in the lining of the bag. Once again, you have enough material if you have the kit for a couple different options here. So I just wanna show you, I cut two pieces of the contrast cork and I also cut two pieces of the lining material. I haven't decided which one I wanna use. I might actually use one of both, just like a little cork and then a lining piece. I don't know yet, but you have enough, again, material to kind of mix this up. And then we have all the little bits and bobs. So we have this pink material for the tab. This is going to be for the O-rings on the side of the bag. Again, you can use whatever material you want here. If you wanna use the contrast, go for that. 
And then we have the contrast that's going to be the tassel and then the two little tabs that are gonna go with the tassel. And finally, we have the strap. You could definitely make this a crossbody if you'd like. Go ahead and use some webbing or just a longer cut of cork. Uh, I will not be doing a crossbody or anything like that today. We're gonna be making this a shoulder bag, just like the pattern designed it, because it is a, the perfect length. It's a very flattering length. But we have one nice cut of this for the strap. All right, not a whole lot of other stuff today. For my top thread, I'm actually gonna use this Mara 70 weight thread. There's lots of beautiful color options in this. And then for the bobbin thread, I'll be using a Guterman thread. This is just Guterman from Joann's. The needle I'm using today is a Microtex 8012. I have a one inch by six inch ruler as always. An air erasing marker is very helpful, again, especially for tracing out those main panels. I just want you guys to be careful with that. Then I have some double-sided tape to help with just placement of different items. I have some washi tape as well. This is gonna be helpful for holding down that lining pocket when we install it. I have a turning tool, particularly helpful for turning out that flap or tab in the front of the bag. A stiletto, as always, a lighter to help clean up any little loose threads. And of course, a bag tag. So if you are gonna be attaching foam to the main panel, go ahead and base that onto your main panel pieces now. Otherwise, we're gonna move on to the tab. So I'm gonna take the lining side of the tab. So this is just the underside of the tab. That's where we're gonna install one of the snaps. And what I wanna do is find the midpoint. So I'm just gonna fold this in half. And I'm gonna find the midpoint on the top and the bottom by just marking with my air erasing marking tool. And I'm gonna work on the wrong side of this material. And I'm gonna measure one inch up from this bottom edge here. And then I just marked a dot that's centered and one inch up from the bottom rounded edge. And then I'm gonna take my washer for my magnetic snap and I'm going to center it over there. So the washer has like a little circle in the middle. I'm just gonna use that circle to center it over my marked dot and then draw in the little vertical slits that are on the sides of that circle. There we go. It doesn't have to be straight or anything. It's a circle. Then I'm gonna grab myself a seam ripper and I'm going to very gently rip right along those straight lines I marked. And I'm not gonna go past where I marked. If anything, I'm actually gonna rip sm a smaller line than what I marked. It's better for it to be on the smaller side than on the bigger side. I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of my cork because I want a little bit of stabilizer here when I install hardware like this. So this is just a scrap piece of the contrast cork. I'm gonna line my washer up over that one as well and draw the same vertical slits. And then I'm just going to use my seam ripper once again and carefully rip along those slits. You could also use Decoville light here. You could use a piece of fusible fleece, any type of interfacing you're comfortable using or just a scrap piece of material like what I'm doing. Then we're gonna flip this over and working from the right side, we're going to take the male end of our snap. Oh, I can't get this apart. There we go. So we're gonna take the male end of our magnetic snap and we're going to insert its prongs into those slits we marked. There we go. I'm gonna grab my scrap piece of material here and insert that over the prongs as well. There we go. So I'm gonna take a look at it from the front. All right, and then the back, and then I'm gonna take my washer, put that over the prong. So I have a sandwich of my waterproof canvas and then my scrap piece of material or your scrap piece of stabilizer and then the washer, and then we'll just push down these prongs. There we go. Now, if you'd like, you could get another scrap piece of material. A fusible fleece is the best and you could glue it over this. Um, since we're using cork, I think we'll be okay because this is gonna be on the other side. But if you had like a quilt cotton or a lighter material, you would wanna cover up these prongs because over time they could wear down the back of the material it's attached to and then just rub through it, especially if it's quilt cotton. But I think, I think for this, we're gonna be okay without any sort of covering on it. So now grab one of your O-rings and a tassel connector and just slide the tassel connector around the O-ring just like this so the tassel connector is right side out, wrong sides together. We're not folding it in half or anything like that. We will have raw edges because we're using cork. That's totally fine. I'm just gonna add a clip here. And I'm gonna go based along the very edge of this tassel connector at an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to hold it in place. Now grab your contrast piece for your tab and let's mark the midpoint on the bottom edge of this one and also on the top edge. Once you have that midpoint marked on the bottom rounded edge, take your little tab with the O-ring and lay it so that the O-ring is going up towards the center of the tab and just 
center your tab on that center mark. Don't forget your clips. I forgot to mention those in the beginning. Go ahead and clip that in place. And now let's baste this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that basted down, take your lining or if you're using the pink cork, just the backside one that has the magnetic snap and lay it right side down on top of the right side of your contrast and line up all the edges and then clip together. Gets a little bulky down here on the bottom. That's where marking those midpoint lines kind of helps because you can just push down right along the edge. Now we're gonna sew along the sides and the curved bottom at a quarter inch seam allowance. Do not sew along the top straight edge, but make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end really well, because we're gonna turn all this out through this small opening here. You might find it easier to use a zipper foot for this part because we do have to get pretty close to some hardware over here. So if if you're worried about your foot getting all wonky around these hardware bits, uh, put a zipper foot on now. Once you have this sewn, if you have really thick material, you might wanna actually go around a second time uh, just to make sure the stitches don't rip when you turn it out. My material is thin enough though that one is good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cut a tall triangle off of the corner here. So I'm not cutting the thread, the stitches that I just made, but I'm getting pretty close to it. This will help when we have to sew this down to the bag because it does get pretty bulky right there. And then you can trim down the seam allowance around the curve to an eighth of an inch if you'd like. You could also just go around and cut slits. This is kind of what I do. I just cut these slits going straight from the edge in towards the thread. And I get them pretty close to the thread. They're not touching the thread, but they get, they get pretty close. And this just allows the curve to kind of spread out and smooth out. There we go. The straight bits you don't really have to worry about. So now we're gonna turn this right side out and it could be a little tricky if you have really stiff material. I find I kind of get it started on the top like this and then I'll reach in and gently grab that O-ring and just kind of start wiggling that out so I don't like take the O-ring and yank it real hard and rip it out or anything but I just kind of wiggle it out like this, see? Should be good, there we go. So let's turn it right side out. I'm gonna grab my turning tool and help turn out the curved bottom here. So what I like to do is I'll kind of use my turning tool and my fingers to smooth out the curved bit. And as I smooth out one section, I add a clip just to hold it like that. Because the goal is to get this nice and smooth. Be careful, you don't wanna to push too hard on the cork, because you can, you can stretch cork. You don't wanna do that, there we go. So now once I get to the edges over here, I'm just gonna kind of roll it. And then as I go along the sides, I just kind of smooth it out, roll it down, just like that. All right, once that's done, we're going to top stitch along all the edges, including the straight edge, at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. There's our little flap tab. How cute is that? Let's set it to the side for just a moment. Now grab your main back panel and let's mark the midpoints on the top and bottom of this. And now we're gonna measure one and a half inches down from this top middle mark. And you might find it easiest to take a ruler and line up the ruler with the middle mark on the top and the middle mark on the bottom, just so you know where the straight line is and then measure one and a half inches down. I know with these curved bits, it can be easy to kind of start moving your middle mark one way or another. Then grab your flap, and if you don't have a midpoint mark on the top straight edge, go ahead and mark one. Mine disappeared. And lay your flap so that you have the magnetic snap facing up, and we're going to lay it down, contrast material right side down. Line up your middle mark with that midpoint mark that's one and a half inches down. And then I like to grab washi tape, and I'm just gonna tape this down because I will. this will come apart on my way to the sewing machine. I'm just gonna tape this down so it doesn't move. Looks pretty straight to me. So now we'll top stitch right along this top straight edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. I like to go off of the edge of this just a bit, like my needle goes right outside of each side of this and then I back stitch. Okay, remove your tape. And I'll say this might be the trickiest part of the entire bag, especially if you're worried about your needle. So this is also why I chose waterproof canvas for this side instead of cork because I wanted to keep this as thin as possible. We're gonna fold this up 
just like that. So we're looking at the right side of the contrast. Make sure everything is straight and lined up. I'm gonna use some clips to just hold it up here so it doesn't twist on me. All right, so we have this folded down right here. Now this right here, you see right, like on these corners here, you can feel it when you're making it. That's bulky, okay, it's bulky. You can break a needle there, so you gotta be really, really careful here. But we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance above this fold, and then at a three eighths inch seam allowance as well. Just do your best, okay? If you're having trouble with the eighth of an inch, just do a quarter inch seam allowance and a three eighths inch seam allowance. Just something to hold this down, because I know that I know that these corners right here can be tricky. I will be going very slow and kind of moving my needle around where I need it to make sure I don't break a needle here. I do backstitch at the beginning and the end of each of these top stitchings as well. Okay, that was way easier than some of the other versions I made. I'll be honest, on thicker vinyl I used, uh, I did break needles. But this one was very easy. The cork and the waterproof canvas, it layers up really nicely. And while it's thicker, it's not really dense, so your needle should be good. Now, you can see I left all the tails long. You can trim them if you'd like, or if you really wanna make sure that this can be used a lot and these threads are not gonna rip, flip it over, keeping the bobbin and top threads nice and long, and then just pull on one of your bobbin threads back here to pull that top thread, there's like a little loop here, a little pink loop. You wanna pull that top thread to the back and then use a stiletto, there you go. And so now I have the top and bobbin threads back here. I'm gonna do this for all four of my pairs. And then what you can do is just knot all of these, so like three knots. And that will keep the threads really secure back here. And you don't have to worry about those stitches unraveling. It's a little extra work, but it does help, you know, increase the longevity of your bag. And then once you have them all knotted, then you can just trim down these tails. And there you go. You have your flap attached, isn't that easy? I'm gonna quickly attach my bag tag. I actually like it to go right below the flap. So I've got my adorable little bag tag and I'm gonna use some double-sided tape on the back of it to hold it in place. And I'm just going to take this and center it right underneath my flap. And now I'll top stitch around all four edges of my tag. There we go. Now my back flap is done. I'm gonna put this to the side. Now we can prepare the front flap. We're gonna mark the midpoint on the top and bottom, just like we did on the back. Now we wanna install the female end of our snap. So we're gonna measure three inches down from this top edge. Once again, you might wanna use a longer ruler, one that connects from the top edge all the way to the bottom so you know exactly where the center is, three inches down. Once you have that center marked, grab your washer and center your washer over that dot and then just mark in the slits those vertical lines, just like that. I'm gonna grab another scrap of cork just like I did before and mark those same lines on here. Now I'm gonna grab a seam ripper and carefully seam rip those marked lines. Super careful. It can be a very small cut here. It does not have to be very big at all. Do the same thing on your scrap fabric or your scrap stabilizer. Okay, so now we're gonna take the female end of the snap and insert this on the right side of our material. Just like that, flip it over, grab your scrap Put your scrap over those prongs and then put your washer over that and spread the prongs open. And since I'll be using the waterproof canvas for the lining, I am going to cover this. So I like to use the Beacon 3-in-1 glue and then a scrap piece of fusible fleece. Again, this can be a scrap piece of anything. I'm just gonna add the glue to the back. You could fuse this, but I, I, don't, I don't like to take time to do that. And just glue this over those prongs and this way I don't have to worry about the prongs ripping through my lining. All right, that's it for the front. Go ahead and set that to the side. So now grab your strap connector and lay it wrong side up and draw a midpoint line going down the center of it. You can use double-sided tape here if you'd like. Uh, I'm just gonna use clips. And we're gonna fold the long edges back, wrong sides together, to meet up with that midpoint mark. Now I'm just gonna use clips here for this. And now we want to top stitch along both long edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have this top stitch, just fold it in half and then right on that fold, cut it so that you have two pieces that are three inches long. Now grab your remaining O-rings and you're just going to thread 
your strap connector around it so that the wrong side of the strap connector is around the metal and then fold it in half just like this so it's right side out do this for both of them and now we're just going to baste along the raw short edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance once you have those basted you can just set them to the side so now we're going to do the lining pocket and like i said you have a few different options here you can definitely make this like pop in your lining it would be so cool i think i'm going to use a piece of the contrast material and a piece of the lining material so the first thing i'm going to do is on the wrong side of each of these along the top straight edge i'm going to mark a line that is half of an inch down and then i'm going to fold down the top straight edge wrong side down to meet that mark so i'm, I'm pretty much creating a quarter of an inch fold which is pretty small so i like to use clips to hold it in place depending on your material you could definitely just iron this so now we're going to place these right sides together just like this you can adjust the clips as you need to and we want to line up all the edges and clip together so the pattern is going to have you sew it like this along the sides and the bottom edge not the straight edge up top uh, which is fine but i'm going to try something a little bit different because this does get bulky up here with these corners and since i'm using cork up here as well i think i want to address it so i'm actually going to unclip close to the edges and flatten this out so it's totally flat just like this all the way up to the corner we do this for both sides there we go and now i'm going to sew along the sides and the bottom at a quarter inch seam allowance make sure you backstitch well up here at the top and then I'll fold this down. I'm gonna see if that reduces the bulk, we'll see. So once that's sewn together, I'm going to trim down the top corners right here, just like I did before with my tab. So just at an angle, just try to get that smaller. And then around the curved bits, I'm just going to trim into the seam like this, just these little lines going in, just specifically where the curve is the sharpest. You don't have to do it where it's straight. There we go. So now I can refold this top edge to go down. I'm gonna, even though it's a teeny tiny seam, I'm still gonna press it open with my fingers as best I can and fold it back down a quarter of an inch, just like that. If you're having trouble with the seam part, just work on the bits around it first and then the seam part will work its way in. So I'm going back in here, just clipping this all together. Again, I'm gonna carefully kind of open up that seam and fold it down. Tell you what the material that we're working with today is great especially if you haven't worked with waterproof canvas or cork before this is going to be good for you this is going to be a good introduction for you okay so i have that folded down and now we're going to flip the pocket right side out and make sure you really smooth out the curvy bottom okay and once i have it smoothed out i'll kind of look and if there's any like really lumpy bits i can flip it back out and i can actually just gently trim off some of that seam and that lets me smooth it out a little bit easier and just again be careful when you're smoothing out these corners you don't want to push too hard against the cork the cork does have a stretch to it and when you do that you could actually end up separating like the bits of cork so you got to be gentle with the cork so i'm just going to go around the edge adding clips here if you're using like a quilt cotton or something you can iron this It'll be quick and easy Okay, once I have the bottom and the sides good, now I'm gonna go back up to the top and I'm just gonna combine the clips to get a nice straight edge up here. So you can see I just kind of unclip one, adjust the edges, because we do need them to meet up with one another. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top stitch along the top straight edge only. So top stitch here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, I do like to back stitch at the beginning and the end. Now grab one of your lining pockets and mark the midpoint on the top and bottom. Go ahead and do this for both of them. Once you have those midpoints marked, you're gonna measure three inches down from this top edge, and we're going to line up our pocket so that it's centered three inches down. So you might want to fold and find the midpoint on the top edge here. If you're gonna use a marking tool, make sure it is one that erases easily. And then we're just going to center this just like that. And then once you have that there, you can grab some tape and tape this in place. So now let's go top stitch this in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch the beginning and the end. Okay, so now we have all four panels ready to go. 
Before we sew everything together, we want to do our darts. So darts are great. They are so easy and they give such great character to a bag. It's kind of like, it's kind of like boxing a curved bottom. I love them. So looking at our darts, we're going to start with our exterior panel and we're going to just fold the material right sides together and just line up this edge where our dart is. So you're going to line up corner to corner and just make sure that the edge is nice and straight and grab your clips and fold it all the way up. So you'll notice that the dart part where the cut fabric is, it ends here, but we're gonna go all the way past it. We're just gonna get it nice and flat and fold it up. There we go. So I'm gonna do this for all of the darts on both my exterior and lining panels. Okay, once you have them all clipped, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew from the curved bottom edge here along the dart all the way to where it ends on the fold at a quarter inch seam allowance. So you can see, let me just show you. I know darts were really confusing to me for a while because I wasn't sure where you stopped. I didn't know if you just stopped where the cut edge was, but no. So let's see, here's a quarter inch from that edge. So you can see we're gonna go from right here on the raw edge all the way across to all the way here on the fold. So if I take the ruler away, we can see, like this is how far it goes off past the cut edge and then onto the fold. So do that, sew all of these at a quarter inch seam allowance and make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end each time. Now let's build the exterior. So you see how the darts work? It kind of looks like a bowl now, but when we pop it out, see that? It gives it a beautiful shape. So now grab both of your exterior pieces and we're gonna lay them right sides together. So let's start up here at the corners and just clip them together. We're not gonna sew along the opening up here. We're gonna sew along the sides and the bottom. When you get down to these darts, turn the seams in opposite directions. So the seam on the back for mine is going towards the left. The seam on the top is going towards the right. Just do that and then continue clipping along all the edges. So now we're gonna sew along the sides and the bottom at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch up here at the beginning and the end. So now this is sewn together, I'm going to trim the seam allowance around the curves in half. And this will help it smooth out a little bit more. And I'm actually leaving the seams at the top as is because I'm going to press them open when I attach these little straps over here. So now let's flip this right side out and then take one of your strap connectors and you're gonna line it up with the seam on the side and I am pressing the seam open on the back. I want it nice and flat and we're going to center the strap connector on that seam with the ring pointing down. And just clip that in place for now. Do the same thing on the other side. Again, make sure you press open that seam and you're attaching it to the right side of the bag, not the wrong side. There we go. And now we're just gonna sew this down at a quarter inch seam allowance. How cute is this? This gives you an idea of what it's gonna look like. Look how sweet that is. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love it. I love how like calm it is. Okay, go ahead and set this to the side. And now we're going to build the lining pretty much the same. So take both your lining panels and lay them right sides together. Matching up all the edges and clip in place. Okay, so when we sew this, it's gonna be a little bit different. First thing you wanna do is you wanna mark a five inch opening on the bottom here. So I'm pretty loosey goosey about it, but you do want it to be in the center on the bottom edge, about five inches. Depending on your material, it might need to be a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. So now to keep the lining from being baggy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the top and we're gonna sew at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Always make sure you backstitch. As you go down this side, increase your seam allowance to 5 8 of an inch. And continue around the corners at 5 8 of an inch. Once you get to this first mark, backstitch, lift up your needle and jump over this opening. So we're not gonna stitch over this opening here. 
put your needle back in over here at this other mark at 5 8 inch seam allowance, continue along the curve, and then as you go up the other side, go down to a 3 8 inch seam allowance and make sure you finish up here at the top at a 3 8 inch seam allowance and backstitch. This has to be 3 8 of an inch seam allowance or else it's not going to fit with the exterior. But increasing the seam allowance on the bottom here allows the lining to just hang very nicely in the bag without being bulky and baggy. All right, if you forget to increase your seam allowance like I did on this first half over here, you can always go back and then just increase that seam allowance. That's what I had to do. So I wanted to show you that just in case, you know, you make a mistake like I do. We all make mistakes. Okay, so now we're gonna trim down the seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch around all of the edges except this open bit down here. We are not gonna trim that down at all. And then when I get to the end of the stitching, I just cut straight into it like that. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we want our lining to be right side out. Grab your exterior and turn your exterior wrong side out gently. Take your flap and push it inside the bag, just like that. Now grab your lining, and I like the pocket to go along the same panel as the flap. So the pocket panel of my lining is gonna go right sides together with the back panel of my exterior. I'm gonna insert this into the bag. So now my lining and my exterior are both right sides together. I'm gonna to start with the sides over here and match up the seams with the exterior and the lining and clip together. And then we're just gonna go around the entire top edge here, clipping these together right sides together. Having those midpoints marked on the top part here is going to be helpful. So you might wanna just do midpoints and seams first and then clip the rest of the bag together. Make sure your O-rings are not flipped up or anything. Make sure they are pointed down. You don't wanna hit one of those with your needle. All right, once you have that whole top edge clipped, we're gonna sew along it at a quarter inch seam allowance. You probably will wanna backstitch over these strap tabs over here. I know it's pretty bulky, so just go slow, okay? If you need to increase your needle to like a jeans needle or a 9014 needle, that's perfectly fine. You did it. You can add a couple little clips if you'd like. I don't think I clipped the other bags and they were fine. So I just want to let you know if you'd like to, you can put a couple little clips in here, but the seam allowance is not huge. So be careful. All right. Now let's turn the whole bag out through that lining opening. All right. Once you've got it all pushed out, put your hand inside and let's push out the edges gently of our cork. There we go. Oh yeah, that's looking so cute. So now I'm gonna tuck in my lining. I always prefer to close the lining after I'm done top stitching the top edge. So I'm gonna pull up my tabs carefully and I'm gonna use that opening that's in the lining so I can put my hand in there and I can easily push out the seam along the top edge so I can smooth it out. And that's gonna let me get it exactly the way I want it. And I'm gonna grab clips and just clip along this top edge between the exterior and the lining all the way around. Okay, so I'm just focused on this top edge here and I've got it all nice and rolled just the way I want it. And now I'm gonna top stitch along this top edge at a eighth of an inch seam allowance. It is bulky over these right here, so I will be very careful as I go over those. Um, I like to top stitch it like this. I'm not gonna be top stitching it from the inside of the bag. You might have noticed when I was sewing this top edge, I was sewing from the inside. I don't usually prefer to sew that way. 
So what I do is I take the bed off my sewing machine. So I just have the arm. And what I do is I take my bag and wrap it around the arm and then top stitch just like that. I find I have more control that way. So whatever's easiest for you. looking so good so if you have some tails let's see where are mine I think mine are over here where you started and stopped your stitching that are kind of like they're like you, you can't really see them on camera but they're like little pokey bits um, I always say that's like the number one giveaway that a bag was handmade and if you want to hide that you grab a lighter carefully real quick I say I say we boop it what you do is you kind of just boop those threads with your lighter and they melt in on themselves they suck in on themselves and now you can't even see it and you know if you were if you were clever you were able to hide it so that no one can tell where you started and stopped your stitching magic all right the last bit for the bag portion is to pull out the lining and i like to reach in and poke out the corners like this so then all I have to do is put my fingers into the opening here and just kind of tug and you can roll the edges down just so the raw edges are tucked inside the bag and you just have a nice fold up here on the top. And now I'm just going to top stitch right along this little opening at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that closed up, just tuck your lining into your bag. How sweet is that? A little pocket in there and let's flip this down. Oh, isn't that darling? I love this. Okay, so now we're gonna do the strap and we are gonna make a very, very simple strap. You are more than welcome to do a crossbody strap if you'd like, or you can use some webbing. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're pretty much just gonna take our strap cut, lay it wrong side up and fold it in half wrong sides together. Grab some clips to clip the two raw edges in place. Yes, we will have raw edges exposed here. If you don't like that, that's fine. What you would wanna do instead is make this twice as wide. So this is, let me see. So this strap here is one and a half inches wide. Just make it three inches wide and then you can double fold it so that way all of the raw edges are tucked into the center. I have a whole straps video um, I'll link so you guys can watch. But I do like the look of this with the raw edge. I don't know, I think this is a very like natural kind of earthy wintry bag and it looks nice like this. So once you have that clip, we're gonna sew along both edges, the raw edge first and then the folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Alrighty, so now you know how much I love rivets. So if you wanna attach this strap with rivets, 1000% go for it. That's a great idea. But because we don't do rivets in the box, uh, because I don't know if everybody has a rivet press or not, I'm gonna show you how to sew it on, which is just as beautiful. And you can even do sewing and rivets if you'd like. So we're gonna take our strap and pick which side is the top side, which side is the bottom side. And we're going to insert our strap and wrap it around so the bottom side comes together. And this overhang right here is going to be one inch. So grab yourself a ruler and make sure it folds over one inch, just like that. And then just clip that in place like that. Now, I do suggest you use a zipper foot for this. Also, if it makes it easier, I like to top stitch from the top side. So that's what I see. But when I do that, I can't see where this edge is on the bottom because I wanna make sure I don't sew past it and you know miss it. So what I do is I just kind of lift this up and I'm gonna mark with an air racing marker on the top part where I'll be sewing so that I know where the bottom edge is here, just like that. So now with this folded over and my zipper foot on, I'm gonna go to the machine and top stitch as close as I can get to my O-ring across like this, following the stitches I already have here and then down this edge, making sure I am getting that edge. So this is the mark here for where this raw edge is on the backside. 
I don't want to go that far. I want to go just below it, right? So I'm just going to make a little rectangle here holding this one inch fold over in place. So you see, now we just have, you can't, probably can't see that, but it's just a nice little box here, very cute. Again, I have these little pokey threads over here where I started and stopped, so I'm just going to burn them with my lighter. Cute. So now we're gonna repeat this on the other side, so just make sure you keep your strap nice and straight. Lift up the other O-ring and wrap it from the outside in. So from the outside in towards the top of the bag, and then have a one inch overhang here. And then I use a clip to hold it in place. And then I'll grab my air erasing marker and just mark where the edge on the bottom is since I can't see that when I'm sewing. And then once again, I'm just going to create a little box right here going right next to the metal hardware, following the top stitching on the sides and then making sure I go just beneath these marks so I catch this raw edge on the back as well. I gotta be honest, these colors are beautiful. I know we don't always think of pink and stuff like that for the holidays, but to me, this, this is very holiday. This is, like I said, this is like a sugar plum bag. It is just so pretty, and it's a style that looks good on everybody. So the last thing we have to do is build the tassel. It is very fun and very easy. So let's grab both of your tassel pieces. You have a little tassel tab and then the tassel bit. I highly encourage you to get some glitter heat transfer vinyl and apply it to the back of this. Let me show you one I did. So this is one of the bags I did previously. And for the tassel, look at the back. Look how pretty that is. I just, I just ironed on some glitter heat transfer vinyl, the same rectangle size as this one. And then I just made the tassel per the pattern. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's so pretty. So I highly, highly encourage you guys to do that. So take your ruler and measure half of an inch down on the wrong side and draw a mark. Now I'm gonna grab my scissors and we're just gonna make little like eighth of an inch cuts from the bottom up to meet that half of an inch mark. And the half of an inch mark is going on the longer side. So the half of an inch mark is actually supposed to go on the shorter side. So you have a longer tassel. I did this wrong, but it's still gonna be cute. So either side, the long side or the short side, half of an inch. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't be an Oakley Roots tutorial if I didn't make a mistake, you know? So as you can see, I'm just eyeballing this. I don't feel that these have to be perfectly straight. I think because there's so many of them, you don't notice if some are a little bit thicker, some are a little bit thinner, some are a little wiggly, like a noodle. And you could use lots of different things for this. You could use felt and you could have like a fuzzy tassel. All right, there we go. So there is our little fringy tassel, so cute. So I'm going to take the little tassel connector and I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom of this o-ring here now you could just glue this closed but for the sake of time um, we don't want to wait for the glue to close I'm going to stitch along this bottom edge here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance okay so now we're gonna glue this in place I like to use the e6000 glue I find that it's very very strong and these tassels do not peel off or anything like that you can use whatever you'd like here I also like to use a clip to hold it in place after it's glued so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it to the wrong side of my tassel and I'm just gonna add glue right along this top half inch area, just right along the center, just like that. There we go, all the way to the end. And now I'm going to lay my connector on top of it, just like that. And I'm going to carefully fold this as tightly as I can around that connector, all the way around. Now, if it's not perfect the first go, that's okay. With the glue, you can kind of wiggle it around as much as you need to. And if you're at a position like this where you're like, ah, I really don't want this little bit right on the corner, you can actually open it up just like that and trim this down so it's a little bit smaller, just so it ends where you want it to end. There we go. I'm just gonna tuck this in. There we go. So now it's all nice and glued on there. I'm gonna take my clip and I'm just gonna add it to that top bit where all the glue is. And I'm gonna let this dry overnight and that way it'll be cured and hard and perfect. But let's just take a look at this bag. We can look at it with the clip. Let's flip it over. Oh yeah, that's so cute, isn't it? Oh, that's so, so cute. I hope you guys love this. I really do. I really hope you love this. I thought this was a beautiful pattern and uh, wait till you see it on you. Wait till you put it on, go look in the mirror. 
It is a, such a flattering bag. All right, so let me know. What did you guys think? What do you think? Let me know if there's any tricky bits because I was so happy with the materials this round. With the waterproof canvas, with the cork, the materials were just, they are so durable and it has a very nice finish, but they're not so thick that we're dealing with needle breaks. You know what I mean? Like it, it works really well with all the layers. And I feel like with the tips we've gone through, there are, it's a very easy bag to put together. And the thing is, is that you're getting used to some more advanced bag making skills here. We've got a lot of curves. We've got a lot of curves, guys. You should be proud of yourself. If you haven't done curves before, you have some experience with curves now, but they're not terrible, right? We did darts. We did darts. It took me years before I started doing darts when I was making bags. And the first time I did darts, I was so confused. So I hope if this is your first time with darts, I hope that it was easy. It should be. It is a very convenient, easy way to add beautiful dimension to these bags. So I really hope you love making the Scarlet. Let me know down below what you think. Let me know if you're making one with other material. I wanna see all the versions. I especially wanna see if you bling it out. Anyway, if you bling it out, please tag me. I gotta see it. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.